patients can die 10 or even 20 years earlier than the general population. So by having an SMI diagnosis, you are at risk of dying younger than the rest of the population already, and that's for various causes. First of all, there are things about the illness that the person has, their SMI and its symptoms, that make it harder for them to um, look after their health in the way that the rest of us do. So for example, they might struggle with motivation, they might struggle to engage with health workers because they might struggle to trust people. It might be that they are quite distracted by some of the experiences they have. So for example, if you have um, unusual beliefs which preoccupy you or if, for example you hear voices that distract you it becomes a bit harder to engage with the uh, with the outside world in the way that the rest of us might so these things make it harder for people to do what the rest of us might take for granted to some extent in terms of looking after our own health having health checks going to appointments um, exercising that sort of thing then um, Unfortunately, it's common for people with mental illnesses and severe mental illness in particular to get treated differently when they seek healthcare. So we know that if they go to accident and emergency, for example, or if they, they, they try and access medical care, they might get treated differently by the people that they see. So we use a term called diagnostic overshadowing. And what that means is that the person seeing them might presume that the thing they're complaining of has something to do with their mental illness when it might not. So I guess the word that underlies that is stigma. The one thing that is relatively common is that when they go seeking medical care for, for some reason or another, they might be treated differently to somebody who doesn't have a severe mental illness. So for example, something like shortness of breath or chest discomfort might be more likely to be attributed to anxiety in somebody who's got a mental illness. And it might mean that the person they're seeing doesn't necessarily go looking for heart and lung problems in the same way they might with a different patient. So very commonly people with severe mental illness smoke. And very often professions, including working in mental health, think that that's just the way it is for that person. They might be quite unlikely to try and help them to stop because they, because that's, that, that, that's what they think these patients do. And I think those sorts of attitudes, quite subtle sometimes, can, can affect any of us working with this, uh, with this patient group. Patients with severe mental illness um, have a number of additional risk factors for dying of a heart attack or stroke. Uh, and these risk factors can be illnesses or that they can be sort of more like behaviours. So for example, people with severe mental illness are more likely to smoke, they're more likely to be overweight, they're less likely to exercise. They're also more likely to have certain conditions, for example, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol. So that combination of, of different factors and illnesses combines to create a much higher or a much earlier mortality from particularly cardiovascular disease. People with SMI are potentially subject to stigma. It might be that they get treated differently even when they do try and access healthcare.